Hey you guys, it's Steve from Natural Selection Angling and today we're going to make some spoons. We're going to make uh, a pair of spoons in number four and number five and we're going to uh, make these blue glow spoons and we're going to make the blue glow paint ourselves along the way. All right, so we're starting off by just sanding down these blanks with a coarse grit sandpaper and I like to use a sponge especially on hex spoons because it gets down in the concavities. And uh, once we have it sanded nice, then we're just going to give it a quick wipe down with isopropyl alcohol and straight to a coat of 4030 clear. Uh, I like to put the clear on before I put the primer on because clear holds really good to the bare metal and then everything sticks to clear. All right, here we go. White primer. So you don't want to go too crazy with this. Just take your time, do a few coats and what I do and you won't see it in the video, but you'll see the same spoons pop up again, is I'll, I'll paint them or clear coat them or whatever I'm doing, and then in between coats, I'll dry it with a hair dryer and then do the next coat. So you'll just see that throughout the video. Most clothes work better against a white background too. So just keep that in mind when you're making your stuff. I'm going to make the blue glow here and uh, scientific study informs us that the blue glow is most attractive to fish. Uh, it's what's most often found in nature and if you look at you know like deep sea fishes that have uh, luminescence it's always in the blue spectrum it's never in that green spectrum. Uh, it doesn't mean fish won't bite it but you know we're just following the science here. So I've added some 4012 reducer and I'm not going to make a ton of this because I only want to make as much as I'm going to use. And then I'm going to add some gloss acrylic uh, base. It doesn't have to be gloss, but that's what I have. And I'm going to mix this about uh, two to one uh, acrylic base to 4012 reducer. And then I'm going to start adding the glow powder. In other videos, I show you how to mix this. Um, typically, a good place to start is four to one um, and then go from there. Uh, four to one your, being your base to your uh, glow powder, but you'll just tweak it as you go along. And because I've done this so many times, I just know how much to use. Right? And after I put this on the mixer, what I realized was it was just a little bit too thin. Um, I have to apply a lot of coats of this to get good glow base. And I don't want it really watery because it's just gonna take a lot of time to, to cure or dry in between coats. And um, you know, I don't want to be all day with it. Okay, so here we go with the blue glow we just made and we're just gonna go ahead and hit these spoons really hard. And you're gonna see me changing the spoon, the small one for the big one. And then you see the big one come back and the small one come back. And it's just because I'm gonna continuously work on these until they're done. I'm gonna put three good strong coats of glow on these. And in between, I'm gonna hit it with the hair dryer to dry it. And then uh, you'll see when we get to the end, it's going to be a nice heavy coat and it's going to be a little kind of grainy on the surface. That's how you know you're really building up the material. And what I'm using here is just a cheap dump gun, uh, 0.5 millimeter, you know, 50 pounds of pressure and just blasting this stuff through the nozzle. Looking pretty good. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna add a coat of 4030 clear. And the reason I do this is because it just protects my work in between steps. And if I mess up the next step, then I can clean this spoon back off to the previous step. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna do some spots and I'm just gonna show you how to use maybe what you have laying around. Maybe your kids have one of these. Um, just tape off the holes you're not gonna use and spray through the ones you wanna use. And um, what you're gonna see here is this is again the, the flat on round effect, right? And the spoon is hex, right? So you're not gonna get perfect circles. So I'm not gonna concern myself with that. And I don't like that anyway. I like a circle with a little bit of overspray. And so I'll hold the stencil very close, but I'll continue to use fairly high air pressure in the gun so that the edge blouses out a little bit 
And I just don't like those sharp edges. That's my preference. Uh, and if I were not demonstrating how to use this tool, I would simply do these freehand. And you've seen me in basically every single video just make spots freehand. So we're just gonna carry on. And all I'm doing here is when I paint a spot, I just set the tool up just outside of the painted spot. So just to the right of the of the uh, right hand edge of the previous spot and that space isn't the same. And then I hit it with a hairdryer and I'm going back and adding a second coat to each one. You don't have to do this. Um, I just find it, it'll be a stronger color. And I've also found that if I just continue to hammer away in one coat, it's just gonna run or drip. All right, so I just took care of some tip drying there with a the Q-tip and we'll finish this guy up. Okay, on to the little brother. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reduce the size of the spots now. It's gonna be more proportional. So, um, you know, the ratio between these spoons is about three to four. Um, and so I'm just gonna use a dot that's about 25% smaller. So it looks proportional and looks like it belongs. Now that I have the method down, I'll just quickly walk through this one. All right, once we get those spots laid down, we'll hit it with the hairdryer and then we'll come back for a second coat. I like to use a little bit thicker of paint and a little more pressure to do this, but you may find what works for you is to thin the paint a little more and you know really bring the pressure down to like 10 or 12 uh, PSI. I typically will do this around 20 or 30 for the reasons I described before. If I'm freehanding, different story. I'll bring it down to 10 or 12. What I'm gonna do here before I go to the next step is I have some overspray because of the phenomenon of flat over round. If you make a flexible stencil, like use a hole punch in a piece of uh, flexible plastic and wrap it around, that won't be a problem. But um, again, I'm just trying to show you what you can use that's available. And so I'm just taking a wet Q-tip here and I'm just working off the paint that I don't want there. And now you understand why the 40, 30 clear in between is so important. Because right now you'd be taking off the glow paint, you'd be very frustrated, you'd be back to the booth to reprime and repaint. All right, so now I'm gonna do some dotting on here. And I'm gonna start with this fluorescent yellow. And this is just a style that I like the way that I paint. And it took me a couple of years to kind of land on the way that I like things to look. Um, so this is the way that I do it, but you do you, man. Do however you like. And I do a style that I call Lottie Dottie. And I basically am gonna take um, the dotting tool and load it with paint, and I'm gonna make three dots without reloading it. And this gives me a big dot, a medium dot, and a small dot. And I'll change their orientation each time so it doesn't look repetitive. And it, I won't say it looks natural, because look at the thing, man. It doesn't look like food, but the fish love it. All right, on to the next one, and I'll just use a smaller dotting tool again, um, you know, like 75% of the diameter of the other one so that everything stays and looks consistent um, and scaled. If that's not important to you, don't worry about it. Just do what you want to do, man. That's what's great about this. Okay, now the trick with these to get nice round dots is never to touch the tool to the surface. What you wanna do is just touch the paint to the surface and the paint will pull off of the end of the tool in a perfectly round drop, okay? Now I'm gonna add a contrasting color and when I make stuff that glows, I like to use some dark colors on it because when it's glowing, those dark colors will kind of punch a hole through the glow and give you some contrast and light colors won't do that. Right, and I didn't plan for this going into it. It's just, I just let it flow. However, I feel like painting something, what looks good to me at the moment. 
Uh, so there's no drawings. I didn't do any central planning for this. I just did what I wanted to do, what I felt like doing. Uh, and these spoons are for me. I'm gonna fish them. So what's most important to me is that they glow really good. Um, the rest of the stuff, I know I'll catch hell from other anglers, but I'll tell you right now, um, the colors uh, don't matter that much. You would probably catch at the same rate if you use nothing but silver spoons or white spoons. Um, and reality is, once you get down 60 feet in very clear water, like Lake Michigan where I fish, uh, colors are gone, okay? The fish literally see everything in gray at that point. So all your deep lines could just be a white spoon. Um, they can see glow. So I'll always use glow when I'm fishing deep. So what I'm doing here now is doing a second coat on these spots. And if you want them to really show up in their natural color, you want to see really bright fluorescent yellow spots, you would spot this with white first and then come over the top of it with the yellow. I don't do that and I don't do it for a reason and you'll see that later. Um, what happens when I do it this way is that first round um, gives kind of like an orange halo to it when you're mixing the yellow and the pink like we are, and then there'll be a bright yellow dot in the center. So rather than having a spot like a leopard, it's more like a rosette like a jaguar, right? It just looks more natural and it looks cool too. Again, not that this looks natural, but apply the technique to your other, your other baits that you're making, especially if you like to paint trout baits. Um, you know, the spots look great when you do it this way. Okay, now sometimes you have a little accident and for some reason, um, while I was applying a blue spot, I guess it was a small bubble in the paint or something, it just popped and made a little splatter. So again, the 40-30 saves are behind here and I just go back and take it right off with the Q-tip. You can't see it at all and that's that. Yep, we're looking pretty good, man. And again, you know, for me, the satisfaction comes from making my own paint, doing the job the way I want to do it. All right, clear coating. This is where, man, so many of you guys have trouble. You don't need to have trouble with this, right? Um, you follow the manufacturer's instructions. If it tells you mix one to one by volume, then do that. If it tells you that it has to be 60% or less relative humidity and cure at 70 to 80 degrees for 12 hours, do that. Um, I'm always, always surprised at the Facebook and uh, YouTube chemical engineers uh, on the painting channels that say, well, you know, it says do it this way, but I'll do it this way. Um, that never produces better results because the scientists that made the product know exactly what they're doing, okay? Uh, and we don't because we're not chemists, at least I'm not. So what I've done is I've set these up for myself by measuring uh, one to one and then determining the specific gravity of each component. And I know the resin that I use, one gram of resin for 0.83 grams of hardener. and I just mix it exactly at that ratio and I write the numbers right on the bottle. If it's one of this, it's 0.83 of that. If it's two of this, it's 1.66 of that, right? So I don't even have to think about it. And I get a perfect clear coat every single time because I follow the manufacturer's instructions on how to do this. So I'll stir it up and you'll see it'll go cloudy in the beginning and then it will clarify. And once it becomes clarified, um, it's ready and I don't heat it up or do anything with it uh, because when you heat it up, you just reduce the working time, okay? So I just leave it just the way it is. And in fact, I like it a little bit cooler because I like it to be a little thicker and it's easier uh, to get a good coat when it's a little cooler. All right, so I'm adding here some uh, silver uh, glitter just to give it a little extra pop. And this glitter is really good. It is all irregularly shaped. It's not squares or circles, it's randos. Um, and it has a lot of different um, colors to it on reflection. So I like to just mix a little bit and you saw how much I use, not much, um, a little bit into the epoxy. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and spread it around and I'm gonna be cognizant of not overworking it. And not because you can mess up the epoxy, it doesn't care 
But what will happen is you'll start moving that glitter from its nice randomized locations into areas where you're working it too hard or out of those areas if you're working it that way. Um, so I just like to get a good coat on and then if any of it's bunched up, I use the bristles of the brush, push it around. And if I need a little more, I'll just grab a little more resin that has glitter in it and tap it on. And look at that thing, man. That's good. That's going to catch fish, no doubt. Now let's do the bigger one. And we're gonna use the same method. I'm just gonna brush it on in a nice even coat, uh, continuously load the brush, continuously flip the brush, and just keep working. But don't worry if it runs over the edges or it gets onto the tool that you're using to hold the spoon. We'll take care of that later. Uh, this stuff will come right off uh, and we can weed it out later. Uh, it passes my visual inspection and it looks really good. So it's important as you're looking at this, look at it from an incident angle, right? And rotate it so you can see if you missed any spots. It gets hard when the lights are bright, your eyes are fatigued. But hey man, this is a natural light. This is what it looks like. And it's really good. It's got a really nice top coat on it. And now let's uh, do a real time experiment. I'm going to give it a few seconds of a uh, black light. And you can see the fluorescent features are really prominent. And you know, in the upper part of the water column, this is what the fish are gonna see. And when I kill the lights, you'll see how great it glows. I mean, that was just a, what? eight seconds of charge. And now look at the spots, right? Those rosettes, how I described them to you. Um, they look really cool. All right, guys, if you got some value out of this uh, presentation, uh, which I hope you did, please like and subscribe. I need all the help I can get to build a positive community here. I really love how the channel's coming together and I hope you guys do too. Tight lines, y'all. Thank <laughs> you.